Hi, I'm Brenna Surrett, Associate Wealth Advisor with Bernie Wealth Management. A common question we get from our clients approaching retirement is what changes should I make to my investment portfolio and when? In today's video, I'm going to help navigate through this question and hopefully provide some helpful tips along the way. If you're approaching that financial transition into retirement, you're probably still getting comfortable with all that entails. You've just spent decades saving and accumulating assets, and now you're transitioning into actually spending down those assets. This switch is one of the most critical financial transitions you'll ever need to make. The first step to tackling this transition is to determine your portfolio withdrawal rate. This is the percentage you need to take out of your investment accounts each year to supplement your living expenses. Here's a quick example to show the calculation in action. So in this example, we have John and Mary who have a million dollars in investment assets and they're planning to retire next month. They have a retirement spending budget of about $100,000 a year after taxes, and they have Social Security and pensions providing them with after-tax income of about $60,000 a year. Taking the difference between their annual spending of $100,000 minus their fixed income of $60,000, they are left with $40,000 a year that will have to be taken out of their portfolio. So dividing that 40,000 withdrawal against their $1 million portfolio, they have an initial annual portfolio withdrawal rate of 4%. And a point I want to emphasize is that this is their initial withdrawal rate, not necessarily their permanent withdrawal rate. It's really important to understand that your withdrawal rate may change over time as your needs change. For example, you may withdraw from your portfolio early as you're waiting to collect Social Security, or you may take more money out if inflation is higher than expected. You may even experience an unexpected life or health event. And these are just a few examples, but with proper financial planning, you should be able to account for these unexpected events so you're not caught off guard. Now that we've covered withdrawal rates, the next step is understanding how the exact sequence of stock market returns may impact your retirement planning. A lot of people understand that they may need to take less risks with their investments when they transition to retirement, but few people actually understand the why behind that. The specific order of market returns is one of the most significant drivers for retirement success or failures and helps explain why it may be beneficial for you to dial down that risk as you're transitioning into retirement. Now to showcase this, I'm going to go through three different retirement scenarios using the portfolio returns from 2000 to 2020 that you see on your screen. But before I jump into those examples, I want to point out two initial observations just based on the data that you see. So number one, the ride isn't always as smooth as it appears. And number two, as you can see, the possible return outcomes are wide. And just to clarify really quickly, we are still big believers in the long-term benefits of investing in stocks over other asset classes, but we at the same time understand the short-term risks that they can pose for retirees spending down their portfolios. So looking at this information, you may be wondering, well, what does this mean for me? So let's go ahead and look at these examples to help. So this example here is somebody asking, what if I don't deposit or withdraw any money from our retirement portfolio? So what we like to call this is a static portfolio, um, and the outcome is very straightforward. The portfolio with the higher average annualized return yielded a larger portfolio balance at the end of the period. And our takeaway is if you do not need to withdraw money from your portfolio during retirement, you have the capacity to take more risk, and you can really capture those long-term benefits of investing in stocks without having to worry too much about the short-term fluctuations. Moving on to the next scenario, we have a client asking, what if I'm actually able to save money each year into my retirement portfolio? And this is definitely a rare scenario to see, but again, we see that the higher growth portfolio comes out ahead. Um, also, the client in this scenario is able to benefit from dollar cost averaging, allowing them the opportunity to buy into the market at various price points over time. And we definitely see the benefit here. On the other hand, in our final and most common scenario, we have the question, what if I need to live off my portfolio? And this one's gonna look a bit different than the first two scenarios we covered. While in scenario one and two, we saw the all stock portfolio come out on top as it was able to ride the ups and downs of the market. Um, the presence of portfolio withdrawals here creates a much different outcome as you can see. Um, and that's because being forced to take living expenses out of a portfolio that has fallen sharply in value means those withdrawn dollars don't have the time to recover as the stock market recovers because they've already been spent. In this case, timing is absolutely critical and you'll have smaller room for error. So you may want to reduce risk to avoid premature depletion of your portfolio. 
And with that, I want to leave you with a few important takeaways. To start, um, you definitely want to invest based off your specific circumstances. Your withdrawal rate and the specific income need from the portfolio are the two factors that really should help in determining how much risk you should take. If you need to take money out of your portfolio early, you'll want to focus on balance more than the prospect for higher returns. This will help avoid the premature depletion of your portfolio, you know, in case there's a bad string of stock market years. On the other hand, if you don't need to take money out of your portfolio early in retirement, you'll want to speak with an advisor to, you know, help determine the right amount of risk to take. You don't want to shortchange yourself long term by being more conservative than you need to be. Um, Remember, context is everything. I hope you found the information and scenarios we covered helpful. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to reach out to an advisor on our team. We're happy to schedule a time to speak with you. You can reach our office at 703-391-6020.